Hey, it's Curly, and today is the release of Divine Set 1 over in Japan. I think it's already been out for maybe like 12 or more hours already, but pretty soon we're going to start seeing some results from locals and any maybe major tournaments that are taking place during this time. So, I wanted to sit down today and just give my thoughts on the initial impressions of all the cars that are introduced in this set, as well as those that are supported in this set. So we have here four tiers, pretty simply put. The bottom tier is not so strong. First impression, I don't feel too strongly about these. From, you know, my first impressions, I've done some testing with a lot of these decks as they were being revealed. Then the next tier up is solid first impressions, so pretty good, standard. Strong first impressions, I think these are really good and really strong going into this first set. And then best set is just what I think is the absolute best, it, just based on what's coming out from this specific set, I think it's very good. This doesn't take into account specifics of like the meta landscape or anything like that. Uh, so it's not like, oh, how well do these decks do against Shirinuri or anything like that. It's just sort of not so much at face value, but if I just take it from the set themselves, uh, the cards that are supported them, and then sort of the cards and the decks themselves, like how well I think they perform. So we'll start off in maybe reverse. Uh, usually I go in like nation order, but I think I'll start in reverse. We'll go with Lyrical Monasterium. Uh, we have some cards here from not the Divines era that actually got supported. Quite a good amount of them actually that uh, we'll talk about today. Starting off with Kyrie here. Kyrie managed to get herself a pretty solid grade 2 in this set and possibly benefits from some of the other just lyrical cards that are being released in this set. So to be honest, between me playing Kyrie now in the English uh, lyrical set 4 format, and then looking at what's getting in the future, I think, you know, Kyrie's looking in a decent spot. Uh, the grade 2 really helps out a lot. It gives the deck a good strong booster, but also it allows the deck to get some soul as well as add cards back to hand, which is like the best thing for Kyrie, because of course, Kyrie grade 4, you want to play your units on that same turn so that they get the power buff from her effect. So the fact that it just lets you bounce stuff, and of course, just bouncing stuff is good because you can use that stuff to guard. Uh, pretty solid first impression. To be honest. Unlike something like Marlene, which is the uh, quick start deck boss for Lyrical, this deck, to be honest, I feel like has a lot of potential, but I personally have not been able to really see it per se. This is all mostly based on my impression, right? My opinion of these decks, so whether or not this ends up being different later on, or if it actually is the case by like other people's metrics, is, you know, neither here nor there, but not the strongest first impression of Marlene, I don't think. I think there's definitely stuff that can happen, but uh, on its own, I don't think the deck has enough legs. Uh, then we have ourselves our first new um, boss unit for the new Divines era with a Divine skill. We have Chris Rain here. Chris Rain has a pretty interesting Divine skill, and has a pretty interesting main skill. Uh, I want to say, because I like her, I have a solid first impression of her, but to be honest, I feel like it's gonna be fine. I don't think it's gonna be crazy strong, um, but it has the entire lyrical library to sort of play around with. I think this is something that will definitely become much stronger in the future, and there's already a lot of plays that you can do, because the divine skill essentially says that after you attack, you scoop up your whole board and you play something from your hand, and then that card that you played gets the power and crit of your vanguard. Uh, there's a lot of cards that you can already use with that to like get a crit, uh, an additional crit, or cards that when on place you can actually call something else, so it actually enables 5 attacks for the decks, which is pretty cool. And you know, Chris Rain herself can get really big, uh, especially with like drive checks and all this kind of stuff, and a lot of like playing local cards to buff her up. And you can pass on that power, so you essentially have like 2 drive checks, uh, sorry, 2 vanguard swings, um, but that's a divine skill, that's once per game. So, like, I don't feel like by herself she does enough. She's a three attack deck right now. And I've been sort of preaching this sort of notion of stop putting down three attack decks. I think three attack decks should exist, but I think Bushiroad has to do a better job of letting them actually exist 
and right now I don't know if I see it. So I'll leave her at the bottom of solid for now. Uh, then we can go on to um, Story Kea, which we actually have a good amount to talk about because we have two versions of Magnolia Mask here. Uh, it's Magnolia Mask. We have Magnolia and Magnolia Mask. Because uh, Magnolia actually got a decent amount of support here. We got two new grade 2s as well as a whole new grade 1 and grade 2 ride line. And it's also not something that's specifically locked to a specific Magnolia. It actually works out for both versions. Um, I already uploaded a video, which you can see here, about my thoughts on the first two units. And then, you know, Boucher Road was like, hey, we're not done yet. Here's another two cards. So I haven't had a chance to play with the new ride deck uh, specifically, but I think it's pretty solid for both decks, to be honest. I think it's pretty good. I don't think it's overwhelmingly strong, but I think it does help out the deck a good amount. But at the same time, it leaves something to be desired. It could have done a little bit more and that would have pushed the decks, both decks a lot more. But I think Magnolia players will be able to be pretty good with what they've got. Then we've got ourselves the Veleno here, uh, Las Lascaria, I, I believe it is. Uh, this is the new Sturkea deck that focuses on blood sorters and also uh, is very, very archetype specific because you really can only play cards from this um, archetype. But it has a lot of cool things where it can kind of do everything. It has multi attack, it has draw power, it has counter charge, it has a crit on the vanguard, it has some pretty beefy swings as the whole board can get 5k and then the units themselves can actually get power from their own skills. Um, I actually think that I have a pretty strong impression of this deck, to be honest. I think it's one of those things where a lot of people are initially going to be pretty excited about or were excited about, and then they try to deck build and then they realized. I don't know what I'm doing here <laughs> and had some troubles really making it work so it's probably not going to see as many eyes initially but I think it actually has a really good toolkit to begin with. Maybe we'll put it at the top of solid because uh, it does need like one or two more specifically named units and the deck I think would be in an extremely good spot but I think it's very strong. Then we have ourselves Cristianos here. So this one's going to be con kind of controversial. Because I've gone to Pat for this guy a lot. And at first, it was kind of in unintentionally. Uh, I just kind of saw a lot of people ragging on him. Because of, again, this whole notion of three attack decks. They they suck. They, they You have to have more than three attacks. What, what are you doing, bro? Get with the game plan. And I was, you know, trying to defend this guy. Like, you know, just give it a bit. And he ended up, of course, getting an, an additional attack. But in you know trying to defend him and trying to see the good in the possible three attack deck from Strike Camp that has the things that Cristianos can do I ended up really liking the deck <laughs> and I actually think it's actually pretty good to be honest it has a lot of positives just for the sheer fact that it can very easily just call me from drop and has these huge bodies that it can call out from drop as well as huge boosters and it has a lot of synergy with it being able to just mill out the deck not exactly to the point where it's just, okay, my whole deck is deck thin, I have triggers, but, you know, still kind of to that extent. Uh, I guess because it kind of feels sort of barrowish, to be honest, that's probably what it is that I really like him with the fact that you can kind of go through your whole deck uh, and do a bunch of crazy stuff. I, I think it's pretty strong, uh, to be honest. I think it's something that, similar to Valeno, is kind of slept on, but I think this has a little bit more power going out the gate. Uh, I feel like this will very quickly eclipse it in set two. Well, we'll see. That does it for Storkea. Next, we have ourselves Brankate here. Um, and for Brankate, the only deck outside of the main ones that got support is actually Gravidium Mask. So Gravidium Mask is a deck that I have been constantly trying to make work since it was released in English and somewhat since it was revealed because I really want to make it work. I think the art looks really cool. I have this as an FFR. I really want to make it work. But uh, Bushiroad kind of did everything they could to make it not work <laughs> when they printed this card. And they kind of went back and made things a little bit easier for the deck building process with the support that the deck got in the vines. That being said, I don't know if I have a solid first impression of it just yet. Uh, I think it's definitely better than it was before, but that's really not saying much. I personally have not tested this just yet. So that's probably why I don't have a strong first impression face value, but we're going to leave this down here for now. In Brankgate, we have ourselves the Quick Start Boss. I think this is like Astrum or something like that. 
Oh, uh, this deck I think is pretty interesting. Initially, this looked like the strongest of the quick start deck bosses because of the fact that it can hit some pretty big numbers and it actually instantly had four attacks and was decently supported in the fact that um, it already came with a blitz order that helped out the, or sorry, a normal set order. Um, I've said all types of orders. Uh, a set order that helps out the deck. And then there was some hope that maybe you can use some of the Blitz stuff for the Welster Shove to help out the deck since it has the same name. It didn't really pan out that way. I don't think you can use any of the actual Welster Shove to be honest. There's maybe a tiny bit of synergy, but really not. Other than that, the deck can actually do 5 attacks now thanks to the great 3 support that they got. Uh, and I think this deck is actually pretty good. A uh, pretty solid strong impression, uh, a little bit higher than solid, so it's like at the bottom of strong. Because uh, it can get some pretty big numbers, right? And one of the downfalls that people see with this deck is that it uses too much counterblast because it has a set order that you need to play. And in order to play, it's counterblast one for no effect initially, right? You don't do anything with this until later on. But once your Vanguard attacks, your Vanguard has a skill where it can uh, Energy Blast 4 to stand one of your units. And I believe that unit gets either 10k or both of them get 5k. I think both the Vanguard and that unit get 5k. But then the order says that whenever something stands, you give both of them another 5k. And that's for each of those orders that you have. And then the Grade 2 support card says that whenever it stands by an ability, I believe, or targeted one of those two, it gets another 10k. So you get some pretty beefy columns just out of that. Um, so you really don't need to put any of your CB investment into anything else and just put it into the order, and uh, you'll be fine. And you can search out the order pretty easily because the ride line, if I remember correctly, works just like sort of like the Eva Arkwright ride, where it's just uh, on ride, search order, on ride, search order kind of deal. Uh, so I think this is actually pretty strong. Welster, on the other hand, I'm not too sure about. I feel like it should be here. I really feel like it has the potential to be here. But I don't have the strongest impression of it after doing some testing. I haven't done testing on it since they revealed the new uh, Grade 2 that lets you counter blast to uh, operate mid battle. I think that's something the deck really needs because right now it relied literally just on Fright Height or Die. And now it has technically a second Fright Height, which I think is more important just in the fact that it has an option to do that and doesn't have to rely on getting double Fright High. And, you know, if one of them gets retired or anything happens to those, or you have to guard with them or they go to damage, the game is kind of over. But this is sort of based on the original Wellstra. Uh, I believe that the new Divine Skill, Faded One Wellstra plays a lot differently than the old Welshra. I just haven't been able to see the vision just yet. So the divine skill here says uh, you counter blast one and I believe you choose two products from your hand and then you activate them or you not activate but you play them and then you get to choose one of them. Uh, I think if you pick two or something like that you can instantly go ahead and uh, operate it. Uh, so it's pretty decent cars it works really well with the um, new uber for the ride line because he just instantly searches out two from your uh, deck puts it into your hand as you ride into this well stress you can then very easily just use the divine skill and you're just set right so it kind of lends itself to you not really needing to play a lot of your orders um, in the deck maybe because you can just very easily just search out two of them and just play them and you're good Maybe you just don't need to play that many overall. You don't have to rely on Fright Height as much maybe to uh, use his first skill to counter blast one discard to fetch your stupid brick for Schultz Maximum to play it in the order zone, right? So it lends itself to a lot of possibilities, but I just haven't seen it as well just yet. So I'm not impressed, but uh, I, I, I think of the deck highly, but I just haven't been able to figure it out just yet. With that, we'll move on to Keter Sanctuary. Uh, we're almost done here. So Keter Sanctuary actually gave support for Alden, which is pretty interesting because Alden got a pretty strong, I believe it's a grade one that even enables more multi-attack, but it clashes with the grade zero promo they already got. Uh, so it's more of the same case here with Welsha, where it's like another a uh, copy of a card that does something you already have but you know it's another copy of that card so now with the 50 card main deck it's a little bit harder to see your consistent your pieces consistently so having extra copies of cards that essentially do the same thing is very good in my opinion uh, i think this is fine 
Um, well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll, just, I'll leave it in. I'm not super impressed. Uh, I think it's fine. I think Alden itself is not a bad deck. It does some decent things. Um, and I think it has a good amount of potential. And I feel like it can be worked with. I just don't feel like I have that strong of an impression of it compared to everything else. As opposed to these two Keter guys here. These decks kind of essentially do the same thing, to be honest with you. They're kind of the same exact thing. Uh, this guy says Energy Blast 4 when it attacks, call something from drop. This guy says Counter Blast 1, call two cards from drop uh, based on like what you have in your damage load and their grades and whatnot. They kind of play the same thing. It's kind of the same deck, honestly. This is technically, unfortunately, just a better version of this, the, whoops, of this guy due to the fact that it has the Divine Skill here. So its Divine Skill here is kind of nutty. Uh, it's not as insane though as it seems, but it does make it a way bigger step up than this guy. So the Divine Skill says you Soul Blast 1, choose all of your critical triggers from your drop, put them back into your deck and shuffle, and then this guy gets a drive until the end of that turn. Then it says if you're at 5 and you damage check for 6 damage, if that's a trigger, any trigger other than a heal, you basically treat it as a heal trigger. Um, so this has situations where like if it's the over trigger, you get to heal twice. If it's a critical trigger, since you just put a bunch back, you get to heal. If it's a draw trigger, you, I'm pretty sure, get to draw and also heal and give power. So, uh, yeah, this deck is, you know, pretty nutty when it comes to that, if you think about it just straight off the Divine Skill. But in testing, the Divine Skill doesn't come up as strongly because there's not that many situations where like, oh great, it's turn 4 and I've already seen 16 of my... <laughs> <laughs> 10 of my critical triggers, let's put them all back. It's not as insane as I initially thought, and of course, healing with any of your triggers is great if it actually happens, so it's the kind of thing where you kind of just kind of do it and bank on it for it to happen. If not, you literally lose the game. <laughs> But that being said, it has some pretty strong support cards. It can set up a board pretty easily. It has a bit of a problem, in my opinion, with maintaining a hand size, which is strange because it just calls out from deck. But there are situations where it can actually amass a decent hand here. Likewise with this fella here. Uh, I think he can do the same thing as well. Uh, it's just that Raziel is just a better version of him, unfortunately. And I really hate that Brucey Road really just saw this guy. In fact, that's great. Let's make him again. <laughs> that does it for Keter. And then next up, we can maybe zoom in a, a tiny bit here. Next up, we've got ourselves uh, the nation that I know the best, Dark States. So Greedon actually got support in this set. He had three whole cards of support. Uh, one of each grade, one, two, and three. One of which actually lets him call out <laughs> something from, I believe, Soul when it goes to Soul. Um, I haven't seen anything crazy, but honestly, I have a really strong impression of Greedon. He might be at the bottom of it, but I, I don't know. <laughs> Greedon Mass was already doing really well for itself. And now that it's uh, getting the potential to maybe, you know, have more multi-attack or anything like that. It has even defensive pieces because grade one now has another card that's an extra 5k shield and it can already be the deck that has to lose at seven instead of six. Uh, so it's already in a pretty good spot and I think the new support just helps it out. I don't think it pushes it to like up here or anything like that, but I think it is pretty strong. Then next up we have Andal here. Andal is the Dark States boss for uh, set one because the Divine Skilled one or the Faded one doesn't come out till set two. And he has a sort of pale, uh, pale moon aesthetic and playstyle where it focuses on specifically direful dolls. So he's very similar to Veleno where you have to use specifically direful dolls, but he's not as restrictive as Veleno, shockingly, because you can play other cards in this deck. And I'm just gonna go outright and say it. Bias and favoritism be damned, I think this deck is crazy good. <laughs> this deck, just like I said about Valen, does just about everything. This can thin out the deck for your pieces, it can recover your pieces from soul, it can guard from your bind zone and give everything an additional 5k shield. It can also have multi-attack, it can draw, it can call out stuff from soul so you don't even have to use your hand at all. It also even has a decent early game. 
this deck I think is one of the decks that people aren't talking enough about. I think they just see like, oh yeah, he looks cool and, and all that stuff. But in terms of like how strong and good the deck is, I definitely think it's one of the best in the set. Totally not speaking from me being a huge Pale Moon fanboy and, and, and Dark Sates and whatnot. I think this deck is extremely good. That being said, I don't feel as strongly about the quick start boss here. I forgot what this guy's name is, but I'm pretty sure it's something really long and hard for me to say. Um, I think it can actually do some stuff. It has some interactions, but I don't think a card pull for Dark States generally helps this guy out a lot. Uh, he leans less towards the like soul charging Dark States variant and more towards the like having specific cards and soul that you can use. So it's more similar to like Andal or like Lukier, uh, maybe even I want to say like Unica or something like that, where it's just about specific cards, but not so much even Unica. Uh, I think this can get some pretty solid numbers, especially with its grade 3, it can hit pretty big. It doesn't have a huge issue with like resources as much. So I, I guess I'll put it in solid. I think it's, you know, it's not bad or anything like that. I just feel like um, it needs more cars that can actually make use of this deck. And I don't feel like it has it right now. Make use of what this boss monster, I guess you'd say, uh, can do at the moment. Then, finally, lastly, we have ourselves, um, Dragon Empire. Eugene managed to get himself a card. Uh, in this set, I'm not gonna be considering the promo card that he gets for probably around this same time. I think it's next month that the promo starts in circulation. So I'm just talking about the one card he got in this set. Uh, that's just a great one, I think, like, restand to get a little bit of power. Not a very strong impression of that. I don't think that's gonna change the deck at all. Maybe the promo will, but we'll talk about that when we talk about that. Uh, then next up, we have our, la our last quick start boss here in this dragon whose name I honestly forgot right now. But this is another one of the quick start deck boss that was really like looked down upon. It was the first one revealed and its effect was, you know, leaving a lot to be desired. All the quick start deck bosses have a skill that let you counter blast, get an additional tanking power, search your deck for a persona, right? Um, I think I've gone over all of their effects. I, I probably I skipped these three, huh? Um, so this guy, sorry, this guy says uh, energy blast four, call two stuff, two cards from your drop. But this is a main phase. It's not during battle. This says energy blast four, call something out from your soul, give it 10k. This says bounce something into your hand and call something out, give it 10k. This guy says instead uh, energy blast four. Retire one of your opponent's rear guards, get a crit, <laughs> and I think 5k. Uh, so not anything too crazy, but there's actually quite a bit of synergy in this deck. Like, Dragon Empire is known to be the deck that doesn't have a lot of good generics or anything like that. Um, and there's actually quite a lot of things that actually work with this deck. I've actually played it and playtested it quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to leave it here and not so strong impression, but I'll leave it at the top of it. Uh, it's 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 solid, and then the fact that it has the grade 3 that can also get a crit, and then there's this uh, Persona Ride Cycler that also can give the other remaining column a crit, so you can technically just swing with three whole columns that have a crit, uh, I think is pretty cool. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's a lot better than people give it credit for. I don't think it's by any means amazing, but I think it is, you know, in, in, by definition, solid. But I'll keep it here at the bottom, uh, or the top of Not So Strong. And then finally, we have Vargas here, our last Divine Skill, who's going to go to the top. Uh, immediately, this is, the I feel like, the best deck in the set. A lot of people feel the same way about it. Honestly, just because of the fact that, uh, one, it's a Vanguard that can restand three times. Restanding vanguards in general are pretty good, but the fact that this can restand an additional time is really strong. It also has some really good support cards and also has the ability to clear your opponents um, a front row, which is pretty decent. This deck is, I think, really good. Uh, I'm pretty biased in both of these, to be honest, because these are both the decks that I'm going to be playing once this set comes out. But uh, it's a combination of I really like how the decks play, but also I feel like they're actually really strong. Right now, this Vargas is coming in as the strongest deck of the set in the sort of general uh, opinion, I, I think, from the whole community, and I I'm just going to have to agree. It just is looking really strong. 
The divine skill uh, for Vargas is that... So it has a first skill that I have to mention, because it plays in part with the divine skill that says, when it attacks, you cannon blast one, retire both front row, your, yours and your opponent's, you get 10k. Then, at the end of the battle, it restands uh, with minus two drives, you know, you can attack again for a second time. Then the divine skill says, if your opponent, I think, is at four more damage and you attacked twice with Vargas' this turn, you cannon blast one, restand it again, and it gets back its two drives, um, which is pretty strong. But of course, it's once um, per game, and it's uh, technically a counter blast two play. There is not really any way. There is some ways to counter charge, to be honest, that this deck can actually benefit from, right? But, uh... It has a lot of other ways that it needs to counter blast as well, but this deck just has a lot going for it. How it fares with everything else is, you know, something we'll have to see as this shakes out. But I think that'll do it for this list. Let me know what you guys think. Any comments down below, either about my specific list or what your thoughts are, where you think should be, and maybe what you're excited about the most for this set. I am, of course, excited the most for these guys. I want to just about play all of these. I'm really excited for Cristianos and Raziel, as well as Veleno and uh, Kyrie. I want to give Chris Rain a shot, and I'm also pretty excited for the Magnolia stuff and also the Gravidia stuff. So just about almost half of it, I guess. And Wallstra. I was really excited for Wallstra initially. I want to give him another shot. But in any case, till next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Play Vanguard and have yourselves a damn good one.